my family moved a lot because of my father's job. By the time I was 17 years old, I had lived in four different states and had gone to nine different schools, including three different high schools in three different states. You see, as a child, I never had an opportunity to put down roots. I never lived anywhere long enough or to know what it was like to have people in my community know me by my name or to have a shared history that I could talk about with others. I never had a, a place when I was growing up that now I can look back upon it and think of it as my home. But what I did have was an excellent opportunity to learn about the different regional cultures that exist right here in the United States, the different ecosystems and habitats, different regional food traditions. It was the experiencing and learning about food, habitat, and culture that helped me as a child feel connected to where it was that I was living, even if it was just temporary. When I was in my 20s, I worked as an activist on the forefront of the environmental movement back in the early 1990s, struggling to get adults to care about their environment. And it was at that point in time that I began to get a much broader picture as to why feeling connected to where you live would matter. The way I see it, feeling connected to where you live is a vital ingredient to the recipe in creating sustainable and resilient communities. If you feel connected to where you live, you're more likely to care about it and want to protect it and want to participate. But how do you get people to feel connected? How do you get them to care? Where's that point of entry? Well, I'm sure there are probably many. The one that I want to highlight begins with our children. Because while we can continue to beat adults over the head with reasons why they should care, and maybe it'll have a short-term effect, what if we were to look long-term and to consider the best ways to utilize our communities to educate, nurture, and to grow citizens that care? Simply by identifying the embedded learning opportunities found in all communities, and then as parents, making a conscious choice to follow our children's interests through community engagement that supports their education, rather than options that are filled with commercialization or void in values and learning. Over 10 years ago, I moved here to Western Mass with my family, and at the time, my daughter was just a baby, but I was pretty clear on how it was I wanted to raise her. I wanted to give her what I never had, and that was a sense of community. And I wanted what it was that she was to learn about in life to be through the lens of her community. It was both that desire for a sense of community and the desire to educate her through her community that led me to create an online resource that would be accessible to all families who, that would support, oops, support education through community engagement called Hilltown Families. Hilltown Families is an online grassroots communication network that highlights community-based educational opportunities. This is an online tool that parents can use to help them identify community educational opportunities and access them through community engagement so they can, they can further the education of their children. This is also a model that any community can adapt and use, including rural, urban, and suburban communities. So what does this look like? Well, depending on your child's interest and your point of entry, this can look many, many different ways. I want to share with you three different points of entry matched to the interests of my own family over the years. But I want you to keep in mind that interests can range greatly depending on the community, depending on the family, and can range for things like history and science, social studies, music, art, math, geology, and that this is a model that could support them all. The, su the summer after my daughter finished kindergarten, I remember her being invited to a birthday party. And if you have young children, you know the typical birthday party ritual. Your child goes to the party, they get pumped full of sugar, they might beat a pinata to death, and then they come home with a goodie bag filled with little plastic toys and more sugar. But at this particular party, the host family chose an alternative. And rather than a pinata, they took these kids to a nearby field and they went on a bug hunt. 
And rather than coming home with a goodie bag filled with junk, each one of those kids came home with a large jar filled with milkweed and a monarch caterpillar. And we took that jar and we put it on the porch, and for the next three weeks, we watched in amazement as that caterpillar transformed into the most beautiful chrysalis. Now, if you've never seen a monarch caterpillar chrysalis up close, I can tell you this. It's a living jewel. They're chartreuse green with gold dots all around them, and they're fascinating to look at. But not as fascinating as it was to watch a monarch butterfly emerge from that chrysalis, spread out its orange wings, and then eventually fly away. That experience gave my daughter a hands-on opportunity to learn about the life cycle of an insect. And it gave me an opportunity to talk to her about the importance of local habitat, because monarch caterpillars cannot survive without milkweed. This eventually led us to our library, where we checked out age-appropriate books on the life, of the life cycle of an insect and a field guide to wildflowers in, of New England. And then we hit the trails, and we would go on hikes, and we would look for wildflowers out in the fields, and we would check out their insect populations and their variations and their adaptations and their defense mechanisms. Her local habitat became her classroom. And I remember it was on one of those hikes that she turned to me and she said, Mommy, when I grow up, I want to be a bug doctor. <laughs> in this example, we use both community and natural resources to support her interests, like our libraries, fields and trails and species native to the region. And it just so happened that the next year in her school, they would be learning about the life cycle of an insect. And rather than it being theory-based, she now had a hands-on experience to draw her references from. Another example I want to give is the Honey Festival. And I chose to take my daughter to this event not only because of her interest in insects, but because it was an intergenerational event that celebrated local food. And that was something I was interested in. The Honey Festival happens every year in the Pioneer Valley on a working apiary. And you can go there with your family and you can check out a working honey bee yard. Kids can learn about the occupation of a beekeeper, and they can learn how honey is harvested. And adults and older students can take on workshops on things like how modern land use is impacting our pollinators. And the best part is this happened on a Saturday, and it was free. You could go and spend the entire day there or just a couple hours. And it was a great alternative to things like going to the mall and going shopping, or seeing a Hollywood blockbuster at the movie theater, or staying at home and listening to your kids whine about being bored all day. Right? In this example, we used a community event to support both of our interests, <clears throat> like the Honey Festival. And it was a great way for us not only to have time well spent together, but it was also an opportunity for us to learn more about how an apiary works and the relationship between pollinators, habitats, and our food systems. But community engagement doesn't only have to be through community resources and community events. Another way to engage with your community is by volunteering with your family. Now, this is something my daughter and I do a lot of. And when she was younger, we did things like participating in park cleanups or trick-or-treating for UNICEF or gathering canned goods for a food drive. And when she got older, we did more involved projects like building birdhouses for the Franklin Land Trust. Recently, 50 folks from three different generations came together to glean the leftover, harvest from a uh, leftover produce from a recent harvest at a nearby farm. And in just two hours, we were able to harvest 669 pounds of organic kale, chard, and collard, and broccoli to donate to the food bank. And these kids were so excited to be out in the field, gathering these vegetables together with their families, bundling them up, and they could not wait to come back and do it again. And even at one point, my daughter overheard one of the youngest volunteers turn and say to his dad, are we helping the community, Daddy? You see, volunteering with your family not only teaches the value of giving back to your community, but it also can support your learning in fields like science, social studies, agriculture, and food security. And studies show that children that volunteer with their families oftentimes will grow up and volunteer as adults. So who knows, maybe they'll grow up and want to volunteer to be on the select board, or the PTO, or organize a river cleanup in their community. Or at the very least, get them interested in eating organic green leafy vegetables. 
These examples are just a tiny sample of the ways you can engage in your community and the embedded learning you can glean from your experiences. Each week online at Hilltown Families, community-based educational opportunities are identified and made accessible so that parents can easily choose ways to engage in their community while supporting their children's interests in education. This is a grassroots model that any community can adapt and use to support learning found in three different points of entry to community engagement, including community-based educational resources, like our libraries, fields, and trails, and species native to the region, and community-building events like the Honey Festival and music and arts celebrations and community service learning experiences like park cleanups and gleaning from a leftover harvest. While my daughter probably won't grow up to be an entomologist, her interest in insects and the way her learning about them have been framed through where she lives have given her much more than just an understanding of their life cycle or the importance of habitat. It has strengthened her sense of place these experiences, paired with many, many more in various fields of interest, have been her lens into the world. She has grown to care about where it is that she lives, because this is what she knows. And like the monarch caterpillar, when children are nursed through their environment, their transformation into productive and caring adults becomes part of their life cycle. And what they learn through their community is their chrysalis. So as they grow up and they emerge, and they spread those wings to fly, no matter where it is that they travel in the world, they will always feel connected to where they have learned. And they will always have a place that they can call home. Thank you. <laughs>